everyone knows someone elderly. Odds are very likely that you visited these old relations, whether they lived in a nursing home, an assisted living facility, an independent living facility, or their own home. What option is best for the elderly? I decided to do my own research to find out. The first option I headed to was the Oaks, an independent living facility in Four Corners. There, I had the chance to talk with Miriam Leberman, the activities director, and Jean Langhorn, a resident. When I retired from the Agent and Disability, I felt like I was only 70, nah, 62, and I said, nah, I don't want to stay home. Those elderly people need me. It was out of necessity that I had to look for another place to live. And I could not find an apartment. Fortunately, I was able to get an apartment here. And I've been happy. I managed to talk to a few more residents. And although I was not able to get their interviews on camera, they spoke very highly of the Oaks and the relationships it offered. Of the younger people I interviewed, most said that they would prefer to live in their own home in the future. I would prefer to be in my own home. I'd rather live in my own home. I'd rather be in my own home. Some may find this hard. Gretchen Vinegar, an occupational therapist who works with the elderly that live at home, explains why. I find that some folks are very isolated and depressed because they're stuck in their homes, particularly people who are very social. You know, when you age, when you get older, your, your friends die. And so oftentimes, you'll be the only one left, or there'll be a few people left, or if all your friends are in their own homes and nobody can drive and everybody has their challenges to get out of the home, then nobody sees each other. But if you don't have a network of people supporting you in your home, it's a pretty lonely place to be. This is a big problem, especially if the person that lives home alone needs extra support. For those who have disabilities, or for the disabled who are lonely and cannot get the support themselves, an assisted living facility, a nursing home, or an independent living facility that offers nursing care may be the best. Riderwood is the latter. At Riderwood, I met with the resident of the facility, Catherine D. Jensen. She explained how Riderwood works to me and the concept behind it. This is assisted living, so this building is kind of like an annex to the whole rest of the campus. You li either live independently or you live here. <laughs> and of course, everybody likes to stay in their own apartment, floors one, two, and three, or four. Folks who can still manage to some, to some degree on their own, and four, four, and five, or we call it full care, where you absolutely have to have care 24 hours. But Riderwood is more than this concept of supplying nursing care to some members of its community. It is its own city. There are tunnels connecting all of the buildings, so that if there is bad weather, one does not have to travel outside. If one does have to travel, there are organized sign-out sheets and buses to take residents around campus. But all of this comes at a cost. Living in any kind of facility is very expensive. Although nursing homes tend to be quite expensive. So for a lot of people, it may not even be an option. Through my research, I've discovered that the place that is best for the elderly depends on who they are, their income, their health, and their likes and dislikes. I've also learned a lot about where the elderly live, and I hope you have too. Thanks for watching!